My poor dear. How could anything like this have ever happened? Why, Henry? Why always Henry? Boy, I must be dead. That can't be. I feel okay. Besides a little rawness in the groin area, a bit of tenderness on my chest. Besides that, I feel fine. Who's going to tell him? You're his father. You tell him. Tell me what? Ah, champagne. How perfect. Uh, Dr. Clairol, would you be so gracious and serve? Why, certainly. Hey, don't go on celebrating without me. I'm not dead yet. Henry, do you remember the patient who was next to you in pre-op? Yes, he was going to have a sex change operation. But what the hell does that have to do with me? Henry, honey, you ended up with his operation. <laughs> I what? <laughs> what is this, some kind of a joke? <laughs> you were supposed to get a tonsillectomy. <laughs> she kind of got a johnsonectomy. <laughs> do you want a reaction? Is that what you want? OK, I'll give you a reaction. I had the most horrible nightmare. I dreamt I had a sex change operation by mistake. And you were there. And you, and you, and you. I'm afraid that was no dream, Henry. And it's also no joke. <laughs> to Henry, to the kind of man he never dreamed he could be. <laughs> to Henry. To Henry. <laughs> Mm. And Dr. Patella, tell us the good news. The operation is reversible, isn't it? I'm afraid not, Mrs. Hole. But look at it this way. You might have lost a son, but you gained a beautiful daughter. Dr. Patella was right. It wasn't a dream, folks. According to the doctors, I'm going through my angry stage. Well, the denial stage didn't last too long. One look at my new pussy and I was a raving maniac. They thought I was gonna kill myself. Well, I wanted to kill somebody, but it wasn't me. Boy, if I could just get five minutes with the doctor who did this to me, I'd... I mean, why would any doctor even consider cutting off a perfectly good penis anyway? It all started at the Reverend's annual barbecue. Old Man Stoner was the town reverend, and he was one of the most loved and trusted citizens the town had ever known. Forgive and forget is wrong. You should forgive, but never forget. If you forget, you will never learn. Now, his son Jack was the complete opposite. He was a son of a bitch then, and he was a son of a bitch back in the third grade. Gentlemen, my father's just too proud to ask his faithful parishioners for contributions. And I hate to do it myself, but somebody has to do it. As you know, there's an evil cult festering in the backwoods of this county. We must fight this plague. We must fight it with all our might. But it takes money. So gentlemen, cough it up. Mrs. Stoner was the first lady of Thomasville, and she was a beauty. I always admired her. I guess deep down, I've always had a well-rooted crush on her. I must have had a crush on her because the thoughts that raced through my head made me want to go to confession. But since I wasn't Catholic, a cold shower in the stoner's guest room would have to do. Well, the shower did the trick all right, but then it happened. Oh, Mrs. Stoner. I need to speak with you. I'm sorry. It was just so hot and sticky, I really needed a shower. Honey, have you seen my... my... my God! Ooh. 
Jack, it's not what you think. Oh, my God. You. That was five years ago, and now I'm back to tell you my story. The story of lost love, lost freedom, and, of course, lost cock. Move it, Henry. Oh, 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 my spine! Oh. Oh. Mm. Mom and Dad, this is Annie. Annie, Mom and Dad. Hi, Mom and Dad. Henry, is this the future bride-to-be? You mean you haven't told them yet? Boy, you two kids are going to have some beautiful children. Henry, you have been gone for several years now. Annie, I am sure that you will grow to love and cherish our humble town of Thomasville just as much as we have. I would like to introduce to you now a very special man in our community. May I present to you the charming and irresistible Reverend Jack Stoner. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for sending the grace of your glory to save these two beautiful people and return them safely home to us. Amen. 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 You know, Henry, even though you and Annie aren't married yet, your mother and I have discussed the matter, and if you two want to share the same room together, well, then it's all right with us. We know how you modern kids are these days. Um, Mom, Dad, uh, I hate to tell you this, but we're not getting married. Is that true, Annie? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm afraid so, Dad. Well, then it's Mr. Hole to you, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you mean the wedding is off? Well, I couldn't exactly leave her in Los Angeles after the earthquake. Hmm. I wonder if I could get my deposit back from the reception hall. We can't say that we're happy about all this, but whatever you kids decide is okay with us. You know, Henry, your mother and I have discussed the matter, and if you two want to share the same room together, well, then it's all right with us. We know how you modern kids are these days. Your father's waiting in the car, and we're going to be late for the Reverend's annual barbecue. I'm making a beeline straight for the ribs, by golly. Stanley! Greetings, my friends, and welcome to my humble abode. Please allow me to introduce Dr. Elizabeth Clairol. She just moved here to Thomasville to start her own private medical practice. Hello, Dr. Stanley Cole. Hello, Stanley. My wife, Mona. So nice to meet you. Hello, Hello Mona. Mona. What a pleasure. Dr. Why don't you take Henry and show him the greenhouse while I give Annie here a personal tour of the mansion. The greenhouse was featured in last month's Scientific American. The Reverend has developed a high-grade fertilizing system that can produce three harvests in a single season. The agricultural industry is absolutely baffled. So tell me, Doctor. You're an intelligent lady. What is Jack Stoner pulling with this Reverend bullshit? He's done a lot of good for this community, Henry especially since the defection of several citizens to the Blue River Cult. The Blue River Cult? That's just a myth. All I know is that after Jack's father's death, his mother joined the Blue River Cult. Loss of his parents has been very hard on him, and I've been treating him ever since. Treating him? Treating him for what? 
don't tell me you didn't know. Know what? The Reverend is one of my patients. Henry, I'm a psychiatrist. We should be getting back. After all, this is an outdoor event, isn't it? Please try to relax, Annie. I'm a clergyman. My motives are of a higher order. But I'm curious, Annie. I don't see you and Henry together. I can't imagine you two married. Well, Rev, it's like this. Henry and I aren't getting married. Oh. You see, I broke off the engagement for personal reasons. Henry accepts it. It's just that he hasn't told everybody yet. I see. The thing of it is, is that I need it. I mean, I really need it. And Henry, he just can't give it to me. I see. Oh, you dirty old reverend, I'm not talking about that. Oh, I, I didn't mean... Henry just wasn't making it in the entertainment business. What's he gonna do here? Get his old paper route back? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not that money is everything. I mean, is it so wrong for a woman to want just a little bit of security? It's rather warm in here. Perhaps we could go back to the barbecue. Excuse me, sir. Are you Henry Hole? Y yeah. <laughs> Damn straight. I'm afraid you'll have to come with me. You're under arrest. For what? For being an asshole. <laughs> you come into town, you don't even call your buddy Al. Al, old oh, buddy. Don't old buddy me, old buddy. You know, I'd say a little shock therapy would do your attitude some good. What do you think, doctor? Uh, to tell you the truth, I think it would frizz his hair. <laughs> well, Henry, old pal, I am ready. Ready for what? Ready to be your best man. <laughs> now, I know I've tried to talk you out of marriage ever since your engagement, but I've had a change of heart. I'm telling you, after the baby came, everything is different. So, uh, when is the big day, big guy? Get a load of those melons. You felt it. I know you felt something, didn't you? What are you talking about, mister? <laughs> At the airport. Don't tell me you don't recall. I don't know what you're sniffing, shooting, or popping, but... You know, that reminds me. I gotta take my medication. Uh... Where are they? Where are my pills? I'll be a monster without them. Henny. I gotta go. Oh, so my dad, being a doctor and all, delivered the baby. It was a trip, man. You know, as soon as the baby popped out, Carol took a huge dub right in front of my father's face. Well, she was really embarrassed, but no, they say it's quite common for a woman to experience a substantial bowel movement directly after giving birth. Come on, Henry. Let's go. Look, Henry, my medication is wearing off. I got major cramps and I'm about to throw up, so just take me back to the house. Great. Now I'm getting one of my heads. God, you have such a woman's brain about everything. <laughs> That was the whole problem with our relationship. It was like you were the woman and I was the man. Do you have to make a scene? Besides, I thought that was your role when you were with Diana. My relationship with Di ended because I wanted a man. Our relationship ended because you couldn't give me a child. You couldn't knock me up, babe. My sperm count has nothing to do with the love I have for you. Hell, the doctor said I had a better chance of winning the lottery or getting struck by lightning than getting her pregnant. The thing of it is, Henry, is that my biological clock is ringing the wake-up call. And honey, your sperm count is singing the blues. <laughs> I want a child with the man I love. I want a real family. And if you're not man enough to give it to me, then I'll just find somebody else who can. Ooh. Don't breathe so deep. Relax. So how's the happy couple? <sighs> Annie, would you be a dear and excuse us for a moment, please? Henry, I'd say now's as good a time as any to make a formal announcement to the town about your broken engagement. Well, first of all, I'd like to say it's really good to be back. And, uh... Go on, Henry, go on. Well, what's the use? 
It's common knowledge by now that I'm impotent. <laughs> the wedding's off, folks. I'm sorry. Hey, Henry, when are you going to cut your hair? It's <laughs> a good question, Henry. Just might do you some good to go see Barney at the barbershop come Monday morning. Cut my hair? You gotta be kidding. That's the least of my problems. You know, Henry, that do of yours might not set too well with the local rednecks. Well, if the local rednecks don't like my hair, that's their problem. Why, for crying out loud, Elvis had hair like mine. Elvis? Henry, are you comparing yourself to our savior? Or maybe Henry thinks he is our savior. Well, Henry, since you are our savior, how about performing a little miracle for us today? Didn't think so. I'm surprised at you, Reverend Stoner. I would think you, being a man of the cloth, would know better than to take the king's name in vain. Why, I wouldn't be surprised if a bolt of lightning was to strike you right where you stand, mister. <laughs> so, it's miracles you want, huh? I guess faith is a hard thing to come by these days. Everybody's got to have proof. I guess a handshake, a promise, a resurrection just isn't good enough anymore. Come on, Henry. Let's hear some more thunder. Or better yet, make it rain. No, don't do that. That would ruin the barbecue. Come on, Henry. Let's hear some more thunder. I want to hear it crack. <laughs> I got a better idea. By the power, Vested in me, I want you, local heckler, to rise out of that infernal contraption and walk to me. Sonny, I ain't walked for 10 years, and there ain't no reason for me to start now. So why don't you just get the hell out of my face before I pummel your head in between your butt cheeks? And the top of the day to you too, local. <laughs> By the way, where's your wife? Now that's none of your damn business, boy. I'll tell you where she is. She's off missing the kind of man you used to be. Hey, now. She has a legitimate excuse for not being here today. And I do not need to continue this any further. Are you telling me that you're refusing your position as a man? As a man among men? As a man in this community? As a husband to your wife? I am a man. And I do not deserve this disrespect. If you're such a man, why is your wife out screwing every Tom, Dick, and Harry? Just call me Tom, Dick, or Henry. He's walking! He's walking! <laughs> Where are you going, local? I'm gonna go find my wife. And then what are you gonna do? After a fancy dinner, I'm gonna take her home and make violent love to her. And then what are you gonna do? I'll let her tell you next week when she joins me for Sunday service. <laughs> This swine has humiliated me for the last time. I will destroy him. I will destroy him by any means, at any cost. I will destroy this demon with my last breath of air, with my last drop of blood. I will destroy Henry Hole if I have to castrate him with my own teeth! Henry? Are you awake? Henry? Henry, wake up. There's some people downstairs that want to see you. What is it, son? I don't know. You stay in bed. I'm calling Dr. Patella.
Henry is very sick today and he won't be performing any miracles. I'm terribly sorry. Say ah. Uh. Well, what is it, Doctor? Just as I suspected. An acute case of tonsillitis. Tonsillitis? But that's what kids get. Well, I'm afraid that's what we have here, is one big kid. We'll have to admit the boy, I mean, we'll have to admit Henry, into community hospital and perform surgery ASAP. Surgery? I'm afraid so, son. It's the only way. Zippity-doo-da, zippity-ay. Hello, Henry. Hey, Doc. Was the ambulance really necessary? My good man, with the high cost of malpractice insurance, we take no chance for error. I got a really bad feeling about this, Doc. I, I might want to change my mind. Besides, I kind of like my tonsils. In the first place, Henry, don't bullshit a bullshitter. And number two, you already signed on the dotted line. Besides, you have nothing to fear. Except, of course, fear itself. Are you sure, Doc? I mean, between me and you, I'm scared shitless. Well, let's see. Worst case scenario would be... Ah, yes. If the anesthesiologist were to place the endotracheal tube directly into your esophagus instead of your trachea, which is actually quite easy to do, this would cause you to suffer hypoxia or lack of oxygen, resulting in severe cerebral damage or, worst case scenario, death. Great. Get out the organ donor cards. But I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. You have a much better chance of winning the lottery or being struck by lightning. Fuck me. Stanley, turn off that light. Is there anything I can do, dear? Never mind. I'll do it myself. Christ, Mona, what am I anyway? Chopped liver? Now, Stanley, sometimes a woman just needs the pleasure of her own body. Besides, it's a weeknight. I'll go easy. Oh, honey, let's save it for the weekend. Anticipation is the best part, don't you agree? In my case, anticipation is a full-time job. Good night, Stanley. Good night, Mona, dear. Stop. Pre-op. <laughs> That's the best part, brother. 
I'll dope you up with Demerol, and you'll be feeling fine and loose, like a long neck goose. <laughs> Be sailing, my friends. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Are we ready for a little pre-medication? You're not going to stick anything up my butt, are you? <laughs> your first time, honey. <laughs> no. Do I look like a virgin? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I kind of forgot where I was. I just can't remember. Hey, man, what are you in for? Today is the start of the rest of my life. Today I'll become the person I never was, the person I always dreamed I'd be. I'll be normal and accepted for what I am. Sex change operation. Oh. Damn this weather. Computers just went down. We're on generator power. And administration doesn't want any canceled surgeries today. So, who's next? It's you, honey. <laughs> hey, good luck, man. Have a good life on the wild side. Good luck to you too, brother. You're gonna need it. Tonsils today, huh? Oh my god, what have we done? If they think I'm gonna take this like a man, then they got something else coming. I mean, there has to be a reason why all this has happened. Nothing in this universe happens by chance. Every incident, every fragment like a piece to a huge universal jigsaw puzzle. A curious, wonderful puzzle that in the end, peace, happiness, and serenity will triumph. Yes, I will triumph. I will accept my fate and dedicate my life to create a better moral standard for my fellow man and woman. I will strive to bring awareness to everyone that man is created equal, and that whether you're black or white, fat or skinny, man or woman, that we are all children of God, that we are all brothers and sisters on this tiny blue and green planet we call home. Oh, who the hell am I bullshitting anyway? I'm screwed. I am really screwed this time. Henry's body is adapting well to the gender reassignment. Dr. Clairol, you will be in charge of helping Henry adapt emotionally to his newly found femininity. Mr. and Mrs. Hole, the hospital is willing to compensate Henry for this dreadful inconvenience. Inconvenience? Listen, Buster, our phone's been ringing off the hook by every malpractice lawyer from here to Toledo. If you want to talk about inconvenience, let's talk about my sore ass from sitting in that waiting room for two hours. When you want to talk about pain and suffering, then you can give us a call. Let's go, Stanley. She gets a little short-tempered when her hemorrhoids flare up. Surprise! 
Well, what do you think? Think? It's pink! Oh, it was so much fun decorating it. It brought back memories when I was a girl. What did you do with all my stuff? Oh, you won't need that anymore. We're having a yard sale. And we have another little surprise for you, Henry. Let me guess, you've got my penis in a jar, right? <laughs> Stanley. It was a gift from the Women's Auxiliary of the Community Hospital. And last but not least, it was intended as a wedding gift for you and Annie, but under the circumstances, well, I never did buy you a car on your sweet 16. Happy birthday, son. Well, there you go. There's my dick. We'll leave you girls alone now. Come on, Stanley. Now remember, Stanley, the doctor said that it's very important for us to make Henry feel like he's accepted for what he is. I don't think I would say anything about the lawsuit. It would just give him one more thing to worry about. And what's that silly looking grin on your face for? Today is Friday and tomorrow is Saturday. That's right, and after Saturday it's Sunday. So get your mind out of the gutter. I feel ridiculous. I don't feel like a woman. Just relax, Henry. It's like acting. Once you look the part, then the rest comes naturally. Trust me, I'm the doctor. And this dress, why can't I wear jeans? Henry, you're a lady now. You must act the part. Okay, when can I see the damage? <sighs> come with me. No one can ever say that Henry Hall is a bad... Wow. Is that really me? It's you, babe. Is it all right if I touch myself? What's wrong? You don't like the dress. No, it's not that. The dress is beautiful. Then, what is it? It's just that I look in the mirror and I see this gorgeous woman. Dr. Clairol, I know I'm gonna miss being a man. I'm gonna miss kissing a woman. I'm gonna miss pissing standing up. I'm gonna miss... Go on, Henry. Miss what? The guy thing. The guy thing? Yeah, the guy thing. Look, I'm a little embarrassed talking about it, let alone admitting it. Henry, I'm afraid I don't follow you. What are you talking about? I'm talking about... Oh, just say it. Whacking off! There, I said it. 
I'm gonna miss Rosie and her five children, get it? Oh, <laughs> you mean Rosie Palm? <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Thanks. Henry, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Women do it. They do? Of course. <laughs> Look, Henry, our souls are victim to our bodies and to the material world. What counts is what's inside. And about missing being a man. You are growing and learning, and soon you'll find yourself to be more than a man, more than a woman. You'll be an individual. That's easy for you to say. And about kissing another woman. You can still kiss another woman. Thanks. You know, I would have done myself in a long time ago if it wasn't for you. Thank you. Uh, Henry, there is just one thing. What is it? You've got to do something about that voice. Come in. Henry, there's someone downstairs to see you. Oh, don't tell me it's those pesky people from the tabloids again. You won't have to worry about them anymore, son. You told him I moved out of the state and that you didn't know where I was, right? Not exactly, son. We told them you were dead. Complications with the surgery. I'm glad Henry's finally out of the hospital. We all are. Oh, is that really you? Damn straight. Why, Henry, <laughs> you look ravishing. Charmed, I'm sure. Look, Henry, I'm sorry for showing up here unannounced, but I thought I owed you an explanation. For moving out the day of the accident? For not calling once in four weeks? For not returning any of my phone calls? Shall I go on? Maybe I should wait outside. Please excuse me. Ladies. This has been very difficult for me. For you? Annie, I thought if there's anything left between us, it was our friendship. I needed you and you weren't there. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Can we still be friends? I never stopped being your friend. And what the hell are you doing with Jack Stoner? Before your accident, I believe there still might be some sort of future for you and I. But after your accident, all of that was shattered, and Jack helped me accept that reality. Look at me, Annie. I'm no hag. I thought there still might be a chance for us. Together. I told you before, Henry. I want a man. Then I'm sure you and Jack will be very happy together. I have to go. <laughs> Look, Henry. You're a beautiful person. And I have to admit I am tempted. But I know what my priorities are and I know what I want. <sighs> do you mind if I give you some womanly advice? Advice? You gotta do something about that voice. You would think that after having one's balls clipped off that I would be talking like Minnie Mouse. But hey, this isn't the movies. This is real life. Dr. Clairol told me about a procedure that could change my voice, but I said, no thanks. My manly voice is the only thing I have left to remind me of manhood. And speaking of real life, today is my first day of job hunting. The guy's got to move on. I have a feeling it's going to be a breeze, too. I got the extra sexy perfume. I got the extra high heels, and I got the extra red lipstick. I can't miss!
assholes. All of them assholes. Why, I'd like to grab them by their dicks and twist them off. That'll teach them. Hmm. I wonder if Al's working. I need a drink. After a full day of having my ass pinched, I could sure use one. Besides, it's payback time. start. Looks like my lucky day. Listen, I can jump behind that bar right now and start bartending. Uh, look, I'm sorry, but uh, we're not hiring bartenders. We're looking for strippers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Al, it's me, Henry. Henry Hull. You asshole. <laughs> Henry! Oh my God, jeez Louise! <sighs> We're even now, right? Oh my God, I, I can't get over it. You look great. You look like a million bucks. I, I, I heard about your accident and all. And I had no idea that... Thanks. <laughs> the usual? Look, I... I would have called from the hospital, but I was a little embarrassed. I can understand. Hey, you got the flowers I sent you, didn't you? Yeah, they lasted three weeks. They were gorgeous. Uh, not half as gorgeous as you, sweetheart. Save it for your wife, pal. And don't bruise the gin, either. You know how I like my martinis. <laughs> Good old Henry. You know, it's nice to see some things haven't changed. Reverend bullshit. I knew it. The guy is a sleazebag phony. And he's got Annie and the rest of the town feeding from the palm of his hand. I want to know more. What's the deal with Stoner? You'd think he'd be at home shining his crucifix. Instead, he's back there shining a boner. <laughs> yeah, that's none of my business. And if you know what's good for you, you'll make it none of yours, too. Boy, oh boy, wait till Annie hears about this. Henry, there's a saying here, what goes on at the club stays at the club. You got that? Hey, look, look, I'm sorry. I know we've been friends for a long time now, but hey, I've got a wife and kid to think about now, and the last thing I need to do is to get on Stoner's bad side. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. Say, Al, seeing as we're old friends, what do you say to giving me the stripper's job, you know, for old time's sake? You mind your own business and uh, it's yours. Just like that? Just like that. Except for one thing. What? You gotta do something about that, boys. Okay, okay, the voice has gotta go. I accept that. Besides, Dr. Clairol said it'll make me more complete as a woman and ease the adjustment process. And maybe it'll help me get Annie back. What I wouldn't do to have a body like that. Henry Hall, the doctor will see you now. What I would do to a body like that. What's the matter, lady? Are you crazy? I don't even know you. Uh, hello, Henry. 
well, my goodness, look at you. I haven't seen you since you were in Boy Scouts and wearing braces on your teeth. What a lovely creature you have become. Thanks, Doctor. And as you probably don't remember, I delivered you as a baby Why I circumcised you myself. I, it was a terrible shame about your accident. Oh, I was so proud of the job I did on your penis, and it was a crime the way those bastards had to go and chop it off. Now come with me, dear, come with me. So, what's the deal, Doc? Henry, we're going to alter your voice to suit your feminine beauty. I don't understand. Of course you don't. You're a bimbo. Just kidding, Henry. <laughs> to do is a mechanical process as opposed to a hormonal one. Mechanical? By adjusting the tension on your vocal cords, it will change the pitch of your voice. Very similar to tuning a piano. Now let's begin, shall we? Henry, could you be so kind and give me a B flat? Ah. Uh... Very good, Henry. Now, do that again and hold it. Uh... All right, Henry, give me an A. Uh... Very good, Henry. Now, do that again and hold it. Uh... Now, Henry, I want you to understand one thing. I can make you sound like anyone I want to, anyone at all. Now, give me an E. This is very funny. Please forgive me, Henry. I couldn't resist. Now, my dear, remember, if you have any problems, I want you to call day or night. Thanks, Dr. Alto. You're an angel. Oh, my. Look at the time, and I'm famished. Henry, would you do me the pleasure and join me for lunch? I'm sorry. I'll have to decline your invitation. You see, I'm on a diet. Oh? A girl's got to watch her figure. If she doesn't, no one else will. Boy, I got a feeling I can be pretty good at this. I'm meeting Dr. Clairol at the local health spa. You know, I kind of like her. It's too bad she's a woman. I mean, it's too bad I'm a woman. I mean, oh, never mind. I never had much luck in relationships, Henry. What do you mean? Oh, let me guess. You're either too picky, or you think you attract assholes, or the guys you do like are either uh, married, or your best friend's boyfriend, <laughs> or they just don't like women. <laughs> well, that just about covers it. Except for one thing. I'm not exactly the most sexual person in the world. Is sex so important? To a lot of men, it is. But, Henry, can I be frank with you? You can be frank. As far as I'm concerned, you can be Larry, Curly, or Moe, but you'll always be Dr. Clara to me. But to tell you the truth, I had some problems as a child, and it kind of screwed up my relationship with men. So you're not attracted to men? Oh, on the contrary, I am. 
But you see, that's my frustration. Because I want a man, yet I can't stand for a man to touch me. You know, when I met you at the barbecue, I thought you were with Jack Stoner. No. <laughs> oh, speak of the devil, look who it is. I look, it's Henry and Dr. Clairol. What a pleasant surprise. Hello, Doctor. Henry, you look radiant. If you don't mind my saying so, uh, you really take my breath away. I bet you say that to all the transsexuals. Why, Henry, your voice, it's, it's lovely. It suits you. Thanks, Annie. I appreciate that. A little modest, are we, Henry? It's just that I'm not used to all this extra equipment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Henry, Jack proposed, and I accepted. <laughs> what? You can't be serious. That's ridiculous. So you don't approve, Henry? You're damn right I don't approve. Well, we're not asking for your approval, Henry. We just thought it would be nice if you were the first to know. Jack proposed to me this morning over a champagne brunch at his estate. Annie, you can't marry this guy. You don't understand he's not the guy you think he is. Henry, the Reverend is one of the community's richest and most respected citizens. Can't be serious. Keep in mind, Annie, that Henry's been through a tremendous emotional strain. Nevertheless, we would love to have you attend the ceremony. <laughs> Say, Annie. Think there's any way you could squeeze Henry in as one of the bridesmaids? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Please excuse us. We really must be going. Let us pray, my humble parishioners, for Elsa the Stripper, who defected from our righteous haven of Thomasville to join the evil ways of the Blue River cult. May God have mercy on her soul. beautiful every time I see you. Henry, is that you? Damn straight. <laughs> Your pappy said that you started working here. He's right proud of you. Damn, you're even prettier than he said you were. Hey, it's karaoke night. What song are you gonna sing? Sing? Yeah, you just tell Smitty what song you wanna sing and he'll punch it up on the jukebox for you. Say, Loka. Would you excuse us for a minute? I want to talk to Henry alone. <laughs> no problem. Hey, you're going to stay for the show, aren't you? To see your titty dancing debut? I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> so, Henry, can I talk to you for a second? Sure. What is it? Listen, I know we've been friends for a long time. Al been through this, I know what you're going to say. Please, let me finish. Okay, go ahead. I just want you to know that uh, this is really hard for me to say. Just say it. I've always had a crush on you. Coming around the mountain when 
she comes, she'll be coming round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Sing? I thought I was just gonna have to take my clothes off. This is gonna be harder than I thought. What am I gonna do now? Hey, wait a minute. How about those stupid Spanish love songs that I used to serenade Annie when we were courting? Hell, it's worth a try. I lost my dick. What else do I have to lose? This is my chance. Get some dirt on Stoner and win Annie back. And if I'm not careful, I just might make some cash. Jasmine, ladies and gentlemen, Jasmine. We have a special treat for you tonight. We have a new dancer joining the club. Let's all give a heartwarming welcome to Henry.
those poor sorry suckers. <laughs> How dare you come into my club and make me look like a fool in front of my men. Your men? Who made them your men? <gasps> Baby case. That's just the way it is. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you can have them. I just want their money. Can I be a real bitch or what? Why, you sperm burping gutter slut! Hey now, nothing against you. I'm just a working girl trying to make an honest buck. Don't patronize me, doll face! You bitch! Are you calling me a bitch? Are you calling me a bitch? I'll show you what. Bitches, bitch. That's right, Henry. I'm the nastiest bitch around. And don't you forget it. Miss Jasmine, the Reverend's car is waiting. Sorry, Henry, but gotta go. We really should do this again sometime real soon. You know, Henry, if I didn't know that your pussy was man-made, I'd swear you had nine lives. But it is, and you don't. So do yourself a favor, Missy. Find yourself a nice secretary job. Crazy, but my woman's intuition is telling me to follow those guys. That Jasmine is just pissed off because she had to take off her clothes and I didn't. I have to prove to Annie and the rest of the town that Stoner is a fake. Well, there you go. There's my dick. Where is that camera when you need it?
Before we end the service today, I have some good news. The Lord has again blessed us with another bountiful harvest from my experimental vegetable garden. But there's also some bad news. Another member of our small community has fled to the clutches of the Blue River cult. Let us pray for the soul of Jasmine the Stripper. May God have mercy on her soul. You monster! <gasps> Henry! Sit down, boy. You know very well that Jasmine didn't split to no Blue River cult, don't you? Or maybe you didn't see me watching you from the window. I saw you kill Jasmine. It made me sick. That's a pretty serious accusation, Henry. I imagine you have some sort of proof. You might try taking a look in the Reverend's exercise room. I think you might find it quite interesting. Now, Henry, the Reverend is one of our community's most respected citizens. You can't expect That's me to... That's quite all right, Sheriff. I have an idea after service this morning. How about if we all take a ride up to my home and I'll be happy to show you the room myself. Reverend, that really isn't necessary. Now, hear me out, Sheriff. I believe that Henry believes that he really saw me kill Jasmine. I think until we can show Henry firsthand that what he saw was only a distorted fragment of his severely traumatized imagination, then and only then will he be well on the road to a full emotional recovery. After all, you can't expect Henry to be completely sane after the type of accident he's experienced. I'm sure the good Dr. Clairol can back me up on that one. Condescending bastard, you're on! <sighs> well, I'll be... Wait till you get a load of this. Some torture chamber, Henry. You know, a little exercise never killed anybody. I tell you, I saw him kill her! Show's over, folks. Let's go home. Wait! Wait! Look, if I'm crazy, I'll be the first to commit myself. But I know what I saw. And damn it if I didn't see Jack Stoner at the nightclub on a number of occasions with a number of different women, Jasmine to mention one, and on the night she supposedly split town. We have wasted enough of the good reverend's time. Now don't push it, Henry. The trunk. That's where she is. Check Stoner's trunk. That's it. One more outburst, and I'm taking you in for observation. Now, I'll be glad to open the trunk on one condition. If my car is to be inspected, then I think it's only fair that Henry's car should be examined as well. Deal. I'm just donating these clothes to poor and needy families. OK, Henry? Now it's your turn. This is ridiculous. I don't even have a trunk. A deal's a deal, Henry. There, are you satisfied? Big deal, it's a bowling ball. Oh, my, what a lovely bowling ball. Say, uh, How's your game these days? Well, actually, Sheriff, the truth of the matter is... Yes, Henry, I think you should tell me the truth of the matter. Because if you don't, heads are going to roll. Just one step.
stinking minute. Well, as you can see, I didn't make it very far in those damn high heels. Real practical shoes, all right. Now, don't lose it, man. Stay calm, buddy. If they see you flip, they'll really think you're loco. What am I talking about? They already think I'm a psychotic maniac killer. What's a girl to do? Mom and Dad, am I glad to see you. Remember, Mona, dear, the doctor said that whatever comes out of Henry's mouth to just disregard is psychotic bullshit. You gotta believe me. I saw Jack Stoner kill her with my own eyes. I'm your son, you gotta believe me. Listen to the poor boy babble away like a clueless idiot. What are you guys talking about? I'm not crazy. Henry is in good hands now, dear. These people are professionals. You gotta believe me, I'm not crazy and I'm not rational. I mean, I am crazy and I am rational. I mean, I'm not crazy and I'm very rational, damn it. My poor baby. Can't they pull the plug or something and put him out of his neurotic misery? You guys gotta trust me on this one. They can't pull the plug on Henry because he's not hooked up to any life support devices. Hey, wait a minute. Mom and Dad, I'm your son! They can't pull the plug? No, dear. They can't. <gasps> Mom and Dad, I'm your son! Oh, what's the use? I'll never get out of this one. Mom and Dad, I knew you wouldn't leave me. Son of a bitch. You set me up and don't you deny it. I'm not about to deny anything, Henry. But who are they gonna believe? A well-respected clergyman or a down-and-out transsexual? <laughs> Annie and I will be married tonight at the stroke of midnight. But I'll let you in on a little secret. We won't be married as husband and wife, but in a higher, more divine manner. You see, Henry, I didn't kill Jasmine for vain or unworthy reasons. I developed a taste for meat. Only through my righteous body can their souls be cleansed. Annie and I will be married, Henry. And I will savor every morsel. My goodness, Henry. You're gonna have to be much faster than that. I've got to get out of here. I have to go save Annie before she becomes Stoner's main course. Oh! Well, that's just swell. What am I supposed to do now? Just relax, pal. Remember, these people are professionals. Hello out there! Can somebody please help me? Won't anyone help me? I got an idea. I hate to do this, but it's my last resort. I've fallen down and I can't get up. What the hell is going on? Say, big fella, 
How about helping a gal out of an awkward position? Hey, you're kind of cute. What's a handsome devil like you doing in a crazy place like this? I can't believe I said that. I'm such a whore. Don't cry, miss. Uh, these people are here to help you. you you'll see. wrong? It's just that my breasts are strapped in so tight into the straitjacket that they can't breathe. They can't? No, they're suffocating. If they could just get a little air for just a few moments, I'd do anything. Well... Pretty please with kisses on top? I'll be eternally grateful, you'll see. Well, I guess under uh, my supervision, uh, we could bust them loose, but just for a moment. That would be heavenly. <sighs> Holy cow! They're a little peaked. Maybe if you massaged them, you could bring some life back into them. If you think it'd help, sure, why not? like George lost a little weight. Is that I've got to get to Stoner's before midnight. I'm never gonna make it. I'm never gonna make it! Stop thinking negative, Henry, and be a man about it. You've gotta save Annie before Stoner turns her into steak tartare! Thank you, God, thank you. Annie and I will be married tonight at the stroke of midnight. I've developed a taste for meat. Only through my righteous body can your souls be cleansed. I've developed a taste for meat, and I will savor every morsel.
Okay, Stoner. The jig's up. Where is she? Where's Annie? Why, Henry, I appear to have underestimated you. You're damn straight you underestimated me. And Dr. Clara. I would have never believed that you would be involved with a slime like that, let alone break bread with the bastard. Henry, you don't understand. You see, the Reverend tricked me into coming here by faking an anxiety attack. Oh, shut up. I'm going to ask you one more time. Cough her up, or I'll blow your head off. You're too late, Henry. You think for one minute that accident you had in surgery was a mistake? Think again, Henry. <laughs> hey, good luck, man. Have a good life on the wild side. Good luck to you too, brother. You're gonna need it. <laughs> 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 you just couldn't leave it alone, could you, Henry? Everything was just fine until you got here. Then you had to go seduce everyone with your charm and your perversion. You're a very wicked person, Henry. It's my duty as a servant of God to see you cannot do any more harm. <laughs> See you in hell, Henry Ho! Mother. It's coming from the hallway. Annie, I thought you were dead. One false move and I'll blow my head off. We're here live at the home of the Reverend Jack Stoner, where Henry Hole, victim of the highly publicized accidental sex change operation, is about to pull the plug. I'll be damned if that boy can ever stay out of trouble. Hey, no, I mean it. Henry, I want to shake your hand. We know you didn't kill Jasmine. You do? We've gotten some complaints that a nasty stench had been coming from the chapel cellar. So you found the body. And about a dozen more. Why, that cellar looked like a human butcher shop. The Reverend has been using the Blue River cult story to cover up all the recent disappearances. And that's not even the worst of it. Apparently, the Reverend had been eating his victims and using his own feces to fertilize his experimental vegetable garden. I don't get it. Of course you don't. You're a bimbo. Oh, I'm just kidding. The Reverend wanted to cleanse the sin of the world. My theory is that in his sick mind, he did so by ingesting those whom he judged to be morally bad and purified them through his own righteous body. I believe that the Reverend believed 
that only through his divine purified excretion could the fruits of the Lord's harvest be fully realized. It's a crazy world we're living in, Henry. No shit. But enough of the bad news. As administrator to the community hospital, it gives me pleasure to inform you that the hospital has decided to settle out of court. Out of court? The hospital feels that since your accident is irreversible and that you must now live the life of a woman, that you should be compensated for the rest of your natural life. Nothing against women, of course. How does four and a half million dollars sound? Henry, oh, I'm so happy for you. Everything's finally going your way. Oh, Annie. Listen, Henry, I've given a lot of thought and I decided to give our relationship another chance. I don't need another man in my life as long as I've got four and a half million dollars. Excuse me? I said I don't need another man in my life as long as I've got you. You know I've always loved you. Annie, my dear. Yes, my love? It's over between us, and I'm over you. <laughs> Dr. Clairol, could you spend the rest of your life with a girl like me? Oh, Henry. Oh, damn straight. They say you can't go home again. Look at me, I tried and I was castrated. I know that sounds terrible, but I can't help from feeling that all this was meant to happen. Kind of like a piece to a huge universal jigsaw puzzle. me. Are you serious? It is Sunday night, isn't it? 